Padre. Okay. okay. All right. So let me share my screen. And um, okay. So these are the 15 images that we'll that you submitted so that we'll talk about today. Um, and if I understand correctly, like you're an author and you have published a book of your collages. Um, at, what year was that? 2018. 2018. And so, but you've never like um, done any kind of limited edition print sales of them. Just Correct. that book, right? Okay. So, um, was there a theme to the book or what sort of like inspires your process? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gathering from what I've seen of your work that it's very narrative, mm -hmm. um, which makes sense with you being a writer. Um, and uh, so I'm just kind of curious, like uh, how these things come come to be like, do you yeah. have a story behind them or? The story comes together as I discover uh, images, um, and that's through the material. So I always look for source materials that have big, kind of colorful, glossy pages or um, shapes that I can cut out that are complete, like the women, like the dresses in the image that you last saw, or like the woman at the top of that. Yeah, like these. These dresses um, I saw in like a fashion magazine, you know, and I was kind of just really drawn to mm -hmm. the way that they were oriented uh, or they could be oriented in relation to each other. Um, mm -hmm. They weren't originally oriented this way, obviously, but um, right. And then but you see I, the kind of composition in your mind, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, there's a feeling of something kind of like clicking um, where I can, like you said, begin to see a story form. And then I look, I guess, for the missing pieces um, of the story. And um, that might actually extend into like color. So there's like those orbs around the birds' heads that match the color of the like sort of river in the background. Um, and and then I, you know, I start to think about texture and pattern and things like that. Um, so at, the, at that point, it's kind of like there's a story first, and then I start to bring a composition together around it. Right. For so you're moments. a pantser, not a plotter. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm totally yeah. not a plotter. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and like, I mean, because my life, I'm making these as my life goes on, like there are kind of different reasons for making each one too. Some of these I made like while I was at a residency thinking about like homelessness, you know, so those have like a different timbre than something like that, which is more like carefree, like that, this image, you know, obviously has a different sort of emotional tenor. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, made this at the end of a relationship, <laughs> you know, you could probably tell by looking mm -hmm. at it. So. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely got a different tone than some of the more playful, colorful images. I love this one. Yeah, um, it was really just obviously thinking about levity and like um, the like kind of feeling of the of vertigo that I get looking down at that beach, but then it's thrown sideways by the orientation of the airplane because it shouldn't mm -hmm. quite look that way, you know, unless it was right. like, making like a deep cut or like a, you know, turning right. a hard angle or something, but it kind of feels, I don't know, mm -hmm. right and wrong at the same time, if that makes sense. Right. Right. No, it's like the there's and that I mean, I think that that's the kind of thing that's like really interesting. You know, it combines in terms of like the marketability of a print like this, like it combines uh, just sort of a vintage kind of interesting subject like, a you know, Boeing 707 um, and it puts it in this context of like, wait, this is like not quite right. So it's a little disorienting and also like intriguing at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really nice colors. Um, so I really like this piece a lot. Um, and um, I like this piece a lot too. There's a lot. So there's like, you know, art that's interesting. And then there's art that's like interesting and also like people will probably buy it. And those end up being, you know, yeah. sometimes two different things, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And yeah. so when I talk about like what what has the potential for um, you know maybe more mass market appeal, it's not to say that like these works aren't all interesting. It's just you know um, that some people would want maybe in their homes. I really like this one too. Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the strong points of this work is that there's like a lot of little elements. So people tend to like work where they're sort of like, you know, pulled in, whether it be like compositionally or because there's some sort of like thing in the, in the you know, part of the subject matter that's like either aesthetically pleasing or interesting. Um, uh, or the colors are, you know, pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, there's sort of like layers to the onion where you're sort of like unpacking it. So mm -hmm. um, I like this one a lot too. I think it, it's kind of hard to say, but this has, this I can see having a buyer to it. I love that you've got the lipstick in the background, like, but it looks like a skyline. Um, yeah. are, these, are these all different ele elements, I'm assuming, right? That you've yeah. cut out, right? Yeah, I think if I had to count, there would be one, two, three, four, five pieces in this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. or six, I guess, because the, yeah, the skull is the last piece. I'd be so curious. Like, I almost don't want to know, but I want to know, like, who this person yeah. is, you know? I remember. Like, yeah. Those rings and the, obviously the coat um, and, you, you like, know. Or something. Yeah, like it feels like, oh, is this like a stockbroker? Is this like Jeff Koons? Is this like, <laughs> you know, um, and then you're, you know. Yeah. I kind of imagine it as a casino, like Las Vegas, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously like there's layers to the the symbology of, um, of having this um, bullhead um, mm. there, you know, you've got, decay and also like it makes yeah. it look almost like a you know a devil um, that plays off of the aesthetic of the the man um mm -hmm. and then with that sort of like masculinity slash con artist what is going on vibe and then yeah the lipstick in the background is like really kind of subverting all of these, these yeah things. Um, in a way that I think is really interesting. So it's strong compositionally, and it also has this sort of like conceptual play to it. Um, but I think, you know, totally it's really and strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. definitely like up there for me. I really like the plane as well. Um, and I mean, I, I really love all these images, but. Um, people tend to want to have something that means something to them or they think it's just really pretty. So I think I would also, I would have to land on this um, mm -hmm. as like my, so these would be like my top three. So mm -hmm. let's just do. I have a question. May I yes. ask at this point? Yes. That last piece, I think I got that original, yeah, this one in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, that original, like the pink piece of the women all together, I, it, I think it came out of a magazine all as one piece and their faces were already, uh, how do you say it, like static like that. Mm. Okay, I, so you oh, didn't do any manipulation here? Not of the women, the women figures themselves. The mm -hmm. background that they're standing on um, is two pieces, I think. Mm -hmm. So, but like, but the sort of, uh, yeah, like the static in the face, I did not manipulate. I kind mm -hmm. of cut them out all as one piece. So what do you think of that in terms of like, yeah. rights? well, you know, rights to the image? Yeah. Like, I mean, I think you've manipulated the image uh, enough, that that's not a problem in terms of that. But as you're saying this, um, I do have a potential suggestion that might make it really interesting. Like even if you took this pattern or something yeah. that mimicked this pattern and mm -hmm. used it in the faces, right. like that kind of adds another layer to it that yeah. I think could be really cool. Um, right, yeah. So you might wanna think about doing something like that um, because that would make me think, I mean, there's so many ways 
like sort of the trick to to art right is that you want for people to get the impression that that the artist is is saying something maybe even something specific and mm -hmm. that they're trying to like solve that puzzle but mm -hmm. at the same time making it their own experience like um so there's this sort of like engagement that lands with the viewer feeling like you know they're making their own meaning to it at the same time like trying to figure out what it is that the artist is trying to say right. so in doing something like that it's almost like and all and i'm not sure what this pattern is but it looks like mm -hmm. reptilian skin or something yeah so like putting that on the face is gonna like charge the idea of like what are these figures but it's also going to add this thing of like this reptilian thing but it's also going to be like um uh uh camouflage you know because it's like matching the background yeah um you know or even whatever it is that you might end up doing if you did want to play with it some more i think mm -hmm. i think could really add something to it um mm -hmm. But, you know, even as it is like it's it's compositionally strong, it's like the colors work really well together. You're sort of like, I don't know, you know, what your intention is behind it. But my takeaway is like, OK, so we're on this like ethereal, like other planet kind of thing. We've got mm -hmm. these female figures like pink is very sort of like girly. But then there's this like reptilian element to it. There's yeah. this like strange plane in the background i don't know where we are um <laughs> and uh i can see people just liking it because it's weird but it's not like so weird that people would find it maybe uncomfortable to look at right because that's the other thing like when i'm saying that there's work that's you know uh that that that's strong and interesting on its own it's not always necessarily something that people want to have like in their home and be looking at it every day mm -hmm. so um that's kind of the sweet spot is like finding something that like people like and they think is interesting i think it's cool uh mm -hmm. but it's not like going to disturb them if they have it like in their mm -hmm. you know living room or something right. um so uh that kind of is like my thinking when i think through like you know what work I'd like to test the market with. Um, and we talked a little bit about this. It's the same kind of thing. It's like, you know, it's got these elements that people tend to like in terms of like commercial and mass appeal, like, you know, planes, trains, automobiles, like, you know, the beach, you know, it's got a vintage color to it. Uh, but then it's also just like, what's happening? Like this plane is like, mm -hmm. not, you know, going the right direction. And the mm -hmm. vertigo that you speak of like you know looking down and just the kind of different angles so i just think it's really cool and i can see people you know who like planes or like travel a lot or whatever um you know being being like oh i think that's really i think that's really cool i think that's kind of weird and interesting mm -hmm. um and yeah. same with this one we talked a little bit about like you know um all the different elements that i think are 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 interesting so then the next kind of layer to it is to take these because they're collages, right? And um, I mm -hmm. would definitely recommend making, you know, fine art, like limited edition prints from them because it allows you to do a few things. Um, mm -hmm. Like it allows you to choose the right kind of material that you're printing it on that can really make it pop and feel like, you know, an, an object like a fine art object and it also allows you to like um addition multiple sizes because some people might you know want a smaller size some people might really like love it at, 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 a, at a big size and so it kind of opens that up you know for you versus like just the original size of the image which i'm not sure how how they are um sized originally but when you print something like this on different kinds of paper depending on the paper it adds like you know it can add texture or it can add like you know um just a different way that the color will will uh, um appear on, on the paper itself so um so 
since you haven't like additioned them before, I would suggest doing something like three different sizes to something depending on the ratio and it'll, you know, change um, from image to image. Um, but, you know, having something that's in that like 12 by 18 that, you know, uh, 18 by 24 and that 24 by 36 ish range. Um, you can also bump that up and have something that's like super big, assuming that you have a good scan for it. Um, but it, when you're additioning things, you can also set your three sizes and then, um, you know, if somebody comes along and wants to do something super big, then you can do like a one off uh, custom uh, of that. So somebody says like, oh, I, you know, I have this space on my wall that's like 60 by 80 and 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 the scan is good enough so that you can print that image at that size you can still choose to do that like as a one-time thing or um do a you know a small addition of 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 things at a larger size that are sort of out of the like norm mm -hmm. um and each piece is probably gonna have it might have I mean, there's a lot of variance to the work so you might have different papers that you would choose to print them on it could even be interesting to try something like a dye sublimation um, uh, with them, which is where um, it's a special process where the, you know, it's printed on paper and then it's fused to a sheet of aluminum and that aluminum is like mounted, flush mounted or float mounted to a piece of wood. Um, that that could be interesting too. Um, so, you know, it might, it might be worth trying to do some samples, something like that, um, that really makes it look like you know, really polished kind of luxury item. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but regardless, if you end up doing something that's a print on paper or um, something that's, you know, like a dye sublimation um, to aluminum, I would uh, try and make it as um, streamlined as possible within that image's addition. So, you know, making sure that you're printing that, that particular image on the same paper and then, um, you know, framing or mounting it the same way so that it's cohesive, sorry. Um, uh, so that it's cohesive within that addition, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes um, sense. And in terms of like larger branding, since you haven't done this before, I would like rely on the fact that, you know, you're an author, so like, this is another way of narrative storytelling, but doing so within like the visual arts medium. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's like a real kind of pitchy hook um, to, to, to market yourself. Um, and then, you know, you have a very distinct style, like even though some of the work is very different than, you know, other pieces, there's still like a thread that ties it together, which is that like, you know, you're, you're layering images in a way that's sort of like creating a totally different meaning to them versus mm -hmm. like sometimes people collage and um, they're, you know, just playing off of the aesthetics of something alone. Like this, the, these works all feel like they're charged. Like there's like, there's some story that I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So that's why I think it also <laughs> really works well to like, you know, lean into the fact that you're, you know, a published author, uh, and this is like a different version of doing that same kind of thing, you know, yeah. and um, you could also play around with if you haven't already, like, um, taking a, like a narrative theme and waxing on about that, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, and whatever, you know, I mean, I don't want to speak for you since you're the artist here, but like, you know, masculinity and femininity, whatever, whatever it might be. And, you know, you don't have to call it that. You can call it something sexier or cooler, like, you know, like picking a Greek figure from mythology or whatever that's going to have that kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, resonate with the, the viewer to be like, oh, this is like about this baby. Um, and having like small clusters of work that sort of are in that quote unquote series, that hypothetical series um, mm -hmm. that, you know, because you want to do a couple things as a visual artist. You want for people to sort of be able to see the kind of cohesive thread throughout the work, which, as I said, you've got down. Um, but then in order for it to be like uh, accessible for viewers, like breaking it down into smaller series, so like six or less than 
that work together on an aesthetic level and have some kind of theme or are playing off of one another. And there's a lot of different ways that you can go with that. But, um, you know, uh, paying attention to, to grouping them in a way that it's not sort of overwhelming to the viewer that they can kind of like look at it and see and under kind of understand, even if they don't quite understand, they can kind of get a grasp for like how these works are all related to one another and sort of a sub theme, if that makes sense. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's my basic takeaway. I don't know if you have any specific questions. Um, um, hmm. Um, well, I am working on this series about the tarot, so that would be, that has some little suites of themes in yeah. it. Um, so, and, but I, you know, yeah, so much of it like comes out of the kind of material that I'm working with too. So I guess I need to, this is inspiring me to go out and find some new materials. Like I'm noticing, and I know that you work with other artists who, work with like airplane Im images of airplanes and stuff but the ones that you chose here I noticed like a couple of them have airplanes in them so uh or I guess at least three of them and so that's kind of an interesting thing to note as I'm like looking at my own work kind of through your eyes yeah. Uh, yeah I guess like what other I guess yeah like what other kind of um organizing themes do you see in there or like you know yeah patterns do you see yeah I mean just as like kind of a general takeaway, I mean, if I were, you know, to look at some of like, I think even this, like to think about sub themes, like these two could be really interesting because it's mm -hmm. almost like, or even these three together because it's almost like vacation <laughs> in another, on, in another alternate reality, right? Like, right. You know, so yeah. there's like a way that, You've got not just like the the airplane that's kind of like you know vehicles that are kind of tying them together, but mm -hmm. you're also taking a certain subject and then putting it in a uh, a, a reality that or um, a, a a landscape or you know a, a, um, a situation that's like playing off of that right you've got water in the desert right you've got the plane that's yeah. like going the wrong direction you've got these people that are like on planet mars or something you know like vacation um, wrong <laughs> yeah right right like you know so there's something there that works on an aesthetic and also like a conceptual layer so i could see mm -hmm. something like that being grouped together mm -hmm. i could see something like this like pairing with um like other kinds of mythological hmm. creatures like if you have like you know the devil and like an angel or you know i mean you're talking about tarot but like if you you know if if we're talking about something where the, the figure is like the soul figure is sort of like here it's um it would be interesting to kind of pair that with either it's opposite or like something that feels like it's opposite um like or you're gonna take the fact that like you know this is maybe a a, a masculine figure and then like pair it with like a very feminine uh mm -hmm. body and a different kind of like head and you could play with mythology with that you know you could do something i don't know with like medusa or like you could do the right. different yeah. gods or you could do different like um uh, I'm not, I can't, I'm not remembering what you call the, the like creatures that aren't real creatures, like, um, like the, um, the man, half man, half horse or something, you know, um, so what you're looking for, but I can't think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, isn't the Sagittarius that or like a mermaid or whatever. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you don't even have to like necessarily, cause it sounds to me like what you've said about your process is that you're really like starting with images that you that are, you know, you find interesting in your source material um and then playing off of color and like the way that they fit together but mm -hmm. um you know if you start by like looking for you know i don't know if we're talking about a mermaid like a mermaid tail and somewhere you know and yeah, how do, I do that yeah you know yeah. going going from there and sort of doing these like you know 
this idea yeah. of like these different mythological creatures and kind of seeing what comes because I don't want to like you know curtail your creative process I w you know want you to be inspired to do that but when you when you start to have like a cohesive theme even if it's not totally like it's not super specific then it, it visually starts to like work together you know another way to do that is to take you know colors and play off of each other so you could also do something like colors of the rainbow or whatever but this mm -hmm. to me is like kind of screaming for like a counterpart to it like if we're talking mm -hmm. about good and evil or masculine feminine or like all of these things embedded together like kind of seeing where that might go um mm -hmm. so that kind of comes to mind um yeah you know, there's all there's all kinds of fun ways i think you could play with this um the landscapes are always really interesting to me like you know like this is so surreal you know so you could take this is a sunset you could do something with like a sunrise you could mm -hmm. you know um take mm -hmm. it to like different kind of like iconic locales and 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 think about it from like a travel perspective if we're thinking about that and like the idea of the phone you could also think of like different kinds of like technologies right like so you could do you've got the phone here but maybe you know you've got I don't know, a fax machine or whatever. You've got also like the statues, so you could find different like mm -hmm. Greco Roman statues and kind of like play around with like those. Speed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I think the phone is really interesting. So you could even take the idea of like the phone, right? And like just have different vintage phones and like different <laughs> interesting mm -hmm. places. Um, uh, so it's always just, even if it doesn't make sense, if you sort of see the repetition of a certain prop that registers with people of being like, oh, this is a thing. Like you'll remember like with Dolly's work, right? Another surrealist. Um, it's like, who knows if he even knew like why he's using the same kinds of like um, repetition of a certain thing but that for the viewer it becomes fun because you're like oh there was like a cello in this piece and then there's a cello in this piece like that has to mean something and they mm -hmm. can make it mean whatever they want to it but that repetition starts to you know mm -hmm. um be a thread that ties the work together even if it's not you know mm -hmm. something that you even really understand um mm -hmm. so yeah um i'm not sure what the story is here but I think it's really interesting to have like these sort of exotic creatures and like, you know, we've got like the male, is this the male gaze happening? Like, yeah. what is it, love potion? Like, you know, so taking something like that and like this interesting like skin, you know, and sometimes if you're maybe looking to play around with it, you can take one work that you really, really like and start to like, either yourself or with other people say like what words come to mind when you look at this and is it like sensuality sexuality female uh pow mm -hmm. empowerment like what you know tigress like you know uh whatever that is and then you can kind of think like what are variations on the theme or like what would be the opposite of those things and then like how would i think about illustrating something like mm -hmm. that so yeah yeah yeah, this was definitely thinking about the erotic. And I think, you know, a good deal of my work thinks about the erotic. You can kind of see it coming up in other. Yeah. Well, not, <laughs> I don't know about oh, I love these, this one. Here's another <laughs> airplane. <laughs> yeah, I really I love like, that. Maybe it's enough. just I love the airplanes. Like, um, yeah. it does feel like it maybe needs something. Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah, this I, is actually I, a really I, early thing. I don't know. This is yeah. even one of the first ones I made. Yeah. Long time. Yeah, I I really like it, but it would be interesting to have like this be like a bright color, maybe, or like to have this in like dialogue with some other element. Right. Um, it's like too static, maybe. It needs yeah. to disrupt it. It's like two yeah. of opposite energies, yeah. maybe, you know, and mm -hmm. too symmetrical, maybe. 
yeah it just needs a little something more but it's got a lot of potential and yeah it's it's it, I, I would explore this one for sure because i think it could be something really cool um mm-hmm. yeah and I, I mean i really like i mean this i think too has some potential i can imagine somebody really being like yeah look at her mm-hmm. like that's me you know um <laughs> yeah uh, and some of these i i really love this piece um and i think that this would have like a buyer it's just maybe a very specific buyer mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. versus you know some of the others but there's a lot happening here and this is when you can have like with the right title you can have you can add a lot of meaning to it because it to me feels like there's a historic kind of component or there's like Mm -hmm. what do all of these things have in common is it Mm -hmm. about banking like you know um is Mm -hmm. it depression era is it you know so if you title it something that sort of alludes to something then people are like oh what is that interesting you know yeah interestingly i think a lot of these pieces are also thinking about like history and the future and this one is definitely thinking about like the built environment and the idea of progress Mm -hmm. Uh, and like kind of as we get further into the foreground we see the consequences of progress but your eye is like continuously drawn to the background too Mm -hmm. you know right right images like seems to be growing there yeah but then you have this woman in the middle, like staring you right in the eye, kind of asking right. you about right. the you know, right. asking you to look at right. her. Right. Yeah. So it's almost like, um, I don't know what the word would be because it's not victims of, but something like late capitalism or you yeah. know, something like that. If you like hint at something like that, or I think it's always interesting to um, pull from like the canon of mythology or some you know something that like you know just kind of like it doesn't tell you exactly what it is but people are like oh Mm -hmm. interesting you know um and then let them sort of unpack it for themselves that makes sense yeah 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 Yeah. so yeah and that piece has a lot more complexity than some of the others like the um, I'm looking for like, you know, like the, like the woman, the sculpture with looking at the telephone is like, I think four pieces, five pieces, but then like that last one that you opened with the city is probably like 30 or 40 pieces, you know, like a lot. So it's just, and it's a larger piece too. Right. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, again, too, like the color, like you see this like teal that like, you know, is repeating. So something like that even works on an aesthetic level, right? Yeah. Um, Because they just look really good together. This one is really cool. Um, It must have just been loading. But this is also one that I would have to say is up there for me. I think that that has a lot of um, potential for for Mm -hmm. people to want to buy that um so yeah yeah. this one also like think you know obviously thinking about like the consequences of human choice and stuff it's like very Mm -hmm. much about what it's I think a title could be something like but what about the butterfly (laughs) you know right 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 um yeah the butterfly obviously has a lot of like layers to it you've got this desolate thing so you know people could think oh it's to do with climate change right like you know yeah um so and then it just works it's like a strong composition it works together the colors are really strong Mm -hmm. um so yeah i would put this up there too um this is where it starts to become like this one with with this piece i think would be interesting because the colors Mm -hmm. would work really well together but you've also got like a subverting of like you know, water and land, mm. you know, is like mm-hmm. a repetition. Um, yeah. yeah. And um, so I could imagine grouping these almost to do, like you've got work that's really playful, work that is, um, you know, sort of based in these surreal kind of otherworldly landscapes, 
Um, and, you know, then you've got things that are like, feel very charged with um, some kind of energy, like, you know, the, the feminine, the divine feminine or whatever. Um, so all of that, I think, um, is worth exploring. And even if I was to just take this body of work and, and group it, I would, I would probably be landing um, in this uh, vein of wanting to group them in these landscapes, like this, the butterfly with the, um, the Greco-Roman figure and maybe even, um, well, I'm not sure because this ends up like being a, it feels a, like a different thing to me. Um, but I could, I could see, uh, you know, these two even like kind of playing off of what we were talking about and then like, you know, playful vacation, vintage vacation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then like, you know, these two, um, and of course they're not going to like show up together because of the way this is, but I really think that these mm. would be really interesting together as well. Yeah, I feel like so. each of these is kind of like telling a story of a vacation gone wrong, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's, you know, maybe that's something. That's the theme. We figured yeah. it out. We figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I think the work is really, really cool. I, and I would definitely um, want to see how it looks like printed and, and up on the wall. Um, I think it's got yeah, a lot of potential. I love mm -hmm. that. Thank you. I'm glad yeah. we agree. This is yeah. Fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you don't have any other questions, then I'll wrap it up. Yeah, no, I think you answered them all. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so let me stop this.